Hello and welcome to day 252 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Arunaba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts, acknowledging your goodness, your mercy, and your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you for the privilege to gather in your presence and to engage with your living word. As we read the scriptures today, the 252nd day of our Bible journey, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us, to open our hearts and minds to the truth that you want to reveal to us. Lord, we pray for understanding, we pray for wisdom, we pray for insight as we dive into your word. Help us to see clearly how your word applies to our daily lives today. Let every verse be a source of encouragement, correction, and inspiration. May we not only hear your word, but be transformed by it, aligning our thoughts and actions with your perfect will. We surrender this time to you, Lord, asking that you speak to us personally and collectively. Let your word take root in our hearts that we may bear fruit that glorifies you. Strengthen our faith, deepen our understanding, and fill us with your peace and your joy as we encounter your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 252, September 9th, 2024, 365 Days Bible Reading. Old Testament, Isaiah 20, 21, 22, and 23. New Testament, 2 Corinthians 11, 1 to 15. Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs 25, 7 to 16. Old Testament, NIV version, Isaiah 20, 1 to 6. A prophecy against Egypt and Cush. In the year that the supreme commander sent by Sargon, king of Assyria, came to Ashdod and attacked and captured it, at that time, the Lord spoke through Isaiah, son of Amos. He said to him, Take off the sackcloth from your body and the sandals from your feet. And he did so, going around stripped and barefoot. Then the Lord said, Just as my servant Isaiah has gone stripped and barefoot for three years, as a sign and portent against Egypt and Cush, so the king of Assyria will lead away stripped and barefoot the Egyptian captives and Cushite exiles, young and old, with buttocks bared to Egypt's shame. Those who trusted in Cush and boasted in Egypt will be dismayed and put to shame. In that day that the people will live in this coast will say, See what has happened to those who relied on those we fled to for help and deliverance from the king of Assyria. How then can we escape? Isaiah 21, 1 to 17. A prophecy against Babylon. A prophecy against the desert by the sea. Like whirlwinds sweeping through the southland, an invader comes from the desert from a land of terror. A dire vision has been shown to me. The traitor betrays the looter takes loot. Elam attack, media lay siege. I will bring to an end all the groaning she caused. At this, my body is racked with pain. Pines seize me like those of a woman in labor. I am staggered by what I hear. I am bewildered by what I see. My heart falters. Fear makes me tremble. The twilight I longed for has become a horror to me. They set the tables. They spread the rocks. They eat. They drink. Get up, you officers oil the shield this is what the lord says to me go past a lookout go post the lookout rather and have him report what he sees when he sees chariots with teams of horses riders on donkeys or riders on camels let him be alert fully alert and the lookout shouted 
Day after day, my Lord, I stand on the watchtower. Every night I stay at my post. Look, here comes a man in a chariot with a team of horses and he gives back the answer. Babylon has fallen, has fallen. All the images of its gods lie shattered on the ground. My people were crushed on the threshing floor. I tell you what I have heard from the Lord Almighty, from the God of Israel. A prophecy against Edom. A prophecy against Duma. Someone calls to me from Seir. Watchman, what is left of the night? Watchman, what is left of the night? The watchman replies, Morning is coming, but also the night. If you would ask, then ask and come back yet again. A prophecy against Arabia. A prophecy against Arabia. You caravans of dead and nights who camp in the thickets of Arabia, bring water for the thirsty. You will live in Tema. Bring food for the fugitives. They flee from the sword, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow and from the head of, and from the heat of battle. This is what the Lord says to me. Within one year, as a servant bound by contract would count it, all the splendor of Kedar will come to an end. The survivors of the archers, the warriors of Kedar will be few. few. The Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Isaiah 22, 1-25 to A prophecy about Jerusalem a prophecy against the valley of vision what troubles you now that you have all gone up on the roofs you town so full of commotion you city of turmoil and revelry your slain will not killed were not killed by the sword nor did they die in battle all your leaders have fled together they have been captured without using the bow all you who were caught were taken prisoner together having fled while the enemy was still far away. Therefore I said, Turn away from me, let me weep bitterly. Do not try to console me over the destruction of my people. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, has a day of tumult and trampling and terror in the valley of vision, a day of battering down walls and of crying out to the mountains. Elam takes up the quiver with hard charioteers and horses, here uncovers the shield. Your choicest valleys are full of chariots and horsemen are posted at the city gate. The Lord stripped away the defenses of Judah. And you looked in that day to the weapons in the palace of the forest. You saw that the walls of the city of David were broken through in many places. You stored up water in the lower pool. You counted the buildings in Jerusalem and tore down houses to strengthen the wall. You built a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but you did not look to the one who made it or have regard for the one who planned it long ago. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, called you on that day to weep and to wail, to tear out your hair and put on sackcloth. But see, there is joy and revelry, slaughtering of cattle and killing of sheep, eating of meat and drinking of wine. Let us eat and drink, you say, for tomorrow we die. The Lord Almighty has revealed this in my hearing. Till your dying day, this sin will not be atoned for, says the Lord, the Lord Almighty. This is what the Lord, the Lord Almighty says. Go, say to the steward, to Shebna, the palace administrator, what are you doing here? And who gave you permission to cut out a grave for yourself here, hewing your grave on the height and chiseling your resting place in the rock? Beware, the Lord is about to take firm hold of you and hurl you away, you mighty man. He will roll you up tightly like a ball and throw you into a large country. There you will die, and there the chariots you were so proud of will become a disgrace to your master's house. I will depose you from your office, and you will be ousted from your position. In that day I will summon you, summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe, and fasten your sash around him, and hand your authority over to him. 
he will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the people of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I will drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will become a seat of honor for the house of his father. All the glory of his family will hang on him, its offspring and offshoots, all its lesser vessels from the bowls to all the jars. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, the peg driven into the firm place will give way. It will be shed off and will fall. And the load hanging on it will be cut down. The Lord has spoken. Isaiah 23, 1-18 A prophecy against Tyre A prophecy against Tyre will you ships of Tarshish. For Tyre is destroyed and left without house or harbor. From the land of Cyprus, word has come to them. Be silent, you people of the island, and you merchants of Sidon, whom the seafarers have enriched. On the great waters came the grain of the Shehor. The harvest of the Nile was the revenue of Tyre, and she became the marketplace of the nations. Be ashamed, Sidon, and you fortress of the sea, for the sea has spoken. I have neither been in labor nor given birth. I have neither read sons nor brought up daughters. When word comes to Egypt, they will be in anguish at the report from Tyre. Cross over to Tarshish, will you people of the island? Is this your city of revelry, the old, old city whose feet have taken her to settle in far off lands? Who planned this against Tyre? The bestower of crowns, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are renowned in the earth. The Lord Almighty planned it to bring down her pride in all her splendor and to humble all who are renowned on the earth to your land as till your land as they do along the Nile, daughter Tashish, for you no longer have a harbor. The Lord has stretched out his hand over the sea and made its kingdoms tremble. He has given an order concerning Phoenicia that her fortresses be destroyed. He said, No more of your reveling, virgin daughter Sidon, now crushed. Up, cross over to Cyprus. Even there you will find no rest. Look at the land of, Bab of the Babylonians, this people that is now of no account. The Assyrians have made it a place for desert creatures. They raised up their siege towers. They stripped its fortresses bare and turned it into a ruin. Will, you ships of Tarshish, your fortress is destroyed. At that time, Tyre will be forgotten for 70 years as part of a king's life. But at the end of these 70 years, it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the prostitute. Take up a harp, walk through the city. You forgotten prostitute, play the harp well, sing many a song so that you will be remembered. At the end of 70 years, the Lord will deal with Tyre. She will return to her lucrative prostitution and will ply her trade with all the kingdoms on the face of the earth. Yet her profit and her earnings will be set apart for the Lord. They will not be stored up or hoarded. Her profits will go to those who live before the Lord for abundant food and fine clothes. New Testament NIV version 2 Corinthians 11, 1 to 15. Paul and the false prophet. I hope you will put up with me in a little foolishness. Yes, please put up with me. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband to Christ so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you received a different spirit from the spirit you received or a different gospel from the one you accepted you put up with it easily enough i do not think i am in the least inferior 
to those super apostles. I may indeed be untrained as a speaker, but I do have knowledge. We have made this perfectly clear to you in every way. Was it a sin for me to lower myself in order to elevate you by preaching the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by receiving a support from them so as to serve you. And when I was with you and needed something, I was not a burden to anyone, for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied what I needed. I have kept myself from being a burden to you in any way and will continue to do so. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, nobody in the regions of Achaia will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I do not love you. God knows I do. And I will keep on doing what I am doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. Psalms and Proverbs. Proverbs 22, 7 to 16. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Whoever sows injustice reaps calamity and the rod, the wielding fury will be broken. The generous will themselves be blessed and for they share their food with the poor drive out the mocker and out go strife quarrels and insults are ended one who loves a pure heart and who speaks with grace will have the king for a friend the eyes of the lord keep watch over knowledge but he frustrates the words of the unfaithful the sluggard says there is a lion outside I will be killed in the public square. The mouth of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. A man who is under the Lord's wrath falls into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. One who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth and one who gives gifts to the rich both come to poverty. Amen. Lessons learned from Old Testament verses. Isaiah 20, the power of obedience in humility. Isaiah obeys God's instruction to walk naked and barefoot as a prophetic sign of judgment on Egypt and Cush. This teaches us that true obedience to God may require humility and personal discomfort, but it serves as a greater purpose in fulfilling his will, God's sovereignty over nations. God's judgment on Egypt and Cush shows that he holds power over all nations this reminds us that no nation is beyond god's authority and his plans for the world are always in motion isaiah 21 god's justice is swift the fall of babylon is foretold teaching us that even powerful empires are subject to god's judgment when they are filled with pride and sin this reminds us of the certainty of God's justice, spiritual watchfulness. The watchman is vigilant and ready to announce the fall of Babylon. This encourages us to remain spiritually alert, always watchful for what God is doing in the world and in our lives. Lessons learned from Isaiah 22, the danger of self-reliance. Jerusalem's people trust in their defense rather than turning to God for help. This warns us against the danger of self-reliance and neglecting to seek God in times of trouble. Repentance is key. The people of Jerusalem failed to repent despite impending judgment. This teaches us the importance of repentance and turning back to God when we go astray as he desires our restoration. Isaiah 23, the temporary nature of wealth. The judgment on Tyre, a wealthy trading city, reminds us that material wealth and prosperity are temporary and can be taken away in an instant. We must place our trust in God rather than in worldly riches. 
God's control over economic systems. Tara's fall shows that God controls not only nations but also economic systems. This reminds us that God has the ultimate say over the rise and fall of economies and businesses. Lessons learned from 2 Corinthians 11, 1 to 15. Guarding against false teachings. Paul warns against false apostles and deceitful workers who present a false version of the gospel. This teaches us to be discerning and vigilant against false teachings that may distort the truth of Christ. Christ, simplicity and purity. Paul emphasizes the importance of remaining true to the simple and pure devotion to Christ. This reminds us that our faith should be focused on Jesus, not on the complexities of human philosophy or deception. The deceptiveness of appearance. Paul reminds the Corinthians that Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light and his servants can appear righteous. This warns us not to judge by outward appearances, but to seek discernment through God's wisdom. Lessons learned from Proverbs 22, 7 to 16. The power of debt. The borrower, a servant to the lender, emphasizes the wisdom of living within our means and avoiding unnecessary debt. It reminds us that financial bondage can limit our freedom. The importance of generosity, verse 9, teaches that generosity leads to blessings, reminding us that sharing what we have with those in need pleases God and results in his favor. Training children in God's ways, Proverbs 22, 6, encourages us to train children in the right path, promising that they will not depart from it when they grow older. The highlights, this highlights the importance of instilling godly values in children from a young age. Justice for the poor. The passage warns against oppressing the poor or exploiting the needy, reminding us that God values justice and fairness, and he defends those who are vulnerable. The consequences of wickedness. Verses 8 to 10 shows that Wickedness will ultimately lead to punishment, but righteousness brings peace and joy. This reinforces the principle of sowing and reaping according to our actions. These lessons emphasize the importance of trusting in God's sovereignty, avoiding deception, pursuing justice, and living with, it, living with humility and righteousness. Faith declarations from Isaiah 20, 21, 22, and 23. I declare that I will humbly obey God, even when it is difficult or uncomfortable. I trust in his plans and purposes for my life, knowing that he is sovereign over all nations and circumstances. I will submit to his will with a heart of faith. I declare that I will remain spiritually watchful, discerning the times and trusting in God's perfect justice. I confess that no matter how powerful earthly systems seem God's justice prevails and I place my trust in his righteousness I declare that I will not rely on my own strength or resources but I will seek God's help in every situation I repent of any self-reliance and I choose to place my faith and trust in God alone I confess that I will turn to the Lord in times of need, knowing that He is my provider and protector. I declare that my hope is in the eternal riches of God's kingdom, not in the temporary wealth of this world. I confess that I will not place my trust in material things, but in God who controls every aspect of life, including finances and economies. I trust in him to provide for all my needs according to his riches in glory. Faith declarations from 2 Corinthians 11, 1 to 15. I declare that I will stay true to the simplicity and purity of my devotion to Christ. I confess that I will guard my heart and mind against false teachings and deceitful influences. I will discern the truth through
through the word of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, keeping my focus on Christ and his gospel. I boast only in the Lord, for it is by his grace and power that I stand firm in faith. Faith declarations from Proverbs 22, 7 to 16. I declare that I will be a good steward of my finances, avoiding unnecessary debt and living within my means. I confess that I will be generous, knowing that God blesses a cheerful giver, and I will share what I have with those in need. I declare that I will raise my children in the way of the Lord, trusting that they will grow to love and serve Him all their lives. I confess that I will walk in righteousness, avoiding wickedness and injustice, knowing that God rewards righteousness and punishes wickedness. I declare that I will trust God to bring justice for the oppressed and will not take part in any form of oppressing, oppression or exploitation of the poor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are super excited to welcome you into God's family. Please kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to re reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvation in christ 101 at gmail.com that is salvation in christ 101 at gmail.com god bless you please remember to subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on instagram and on tiktok at sandra boyo Arelaba. thank you so much for being here again today it's always a blessing having you here i look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow have a blessed day today I love you. Bye.